All right, so in the last video, we went over how to create an uplink in Anvil. And uh, if you're new to Anvil, Anvil is a, a web-based rapid application development tool uh, where you can develop on the front end and the back end all using Python. And it's a very slick tool and I, I like it a lot. And so uh, in part two of this video, I'm actually going to go deeper into creating the uplink. Uh, the last video, we did a very basic example that just basically uh, output a, a string of text uh, using the uplink. In this video, I'm going to do something a little bit more complex using uh, the uplink feature. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to do some image processing. And we're going to use a, a image library, uh, image processing library called Pillow. Uh, which is sort of the successor of PIL, P-I-L. And um, so let's get started. So I'm going to use the existing app that we created in the last video, which is right here, and I'm just going to add to it. So uh, I'm going to add like a spacer right below it just to give it some separation. And, uh, and then I'm going to use this file loader here and drag that in down below. So this file loader will let us uh, click on it and we'll be able to select a file from our local computer and it will upload it to uh, the Anvil app for processing. Uh, you don't need any of this above. I'm just using this existing app because I already have it. Uh, I already made it in the last uh, in the last video. But uh, everything that I'm doing here will be independent of what we did previously. So we have this button added and I'm going to go to the settings here and or sorry the properties here and I'm going to specify the file types will need to be like a .jpg or .png so those are sort of uh, limiting it to just uh, image files uh, and that will be all that we can upload um, using this button and I think everything else is okay I can probably relay that relabel this as maybe like um, image uploader or something like that. It's always good to add a proper name to each of your components. So, okay, so I've added that. So in order for us to do some image processing on the server, we're going to need to take, uh, to import a library uh, called Pillow. And the way we would do that is we would say from PIL, P-I-L, all caps, import image. And so we can use this uh, image object to do some file processing. The other thing that we need to add in uh, in order to get this done is uh, import IO. And IO helps us do some of the, the processing in and out uh, uh, to make this work. So uh, I'm gonna create a new function. Oh, and before I create the new function, we need to always add anvil server.callable just so that we can let Anvil know that the function we're right below it is uh, allowed to be called from the client end so that it can be run. Uh, without that, without An Anvil server callable, uh, it won't recognize it to run it uh, when it's called from the client. So I'm gonna call this function process image and we're gonna take in an image file that we're gonna, we're gonna manipulate. And so the first thing we need to do is load that file, uh, to open up that file. And so I'm just going to call this uh, image object. And the image object is image.open. So that's, uh, that's a pillow. Uh, you know, we're accessing this image object from pillow. And then uh, this is a little bit specific to Anvil. But what we need to do in order to load it in is we need to go io.bytes.io and then load in the image object, which is coming from uh, when our function gets called, and then call get underscore bytes. And that, that will load in the binary image file uh, for us to be able to work with. And then, um, let me just load, move this up a little bit so you can see. But then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna manipulate the image object. So, uh, just looking this up uh, in Pillow, the, the documentation, we can flip the image by doing something like this. So I'm going to call this flipped image, and we're going to take the image object and transpose that, and we're going to take this image object again and say flip underscore left underscore right, 
And so that'll actually flip the object from left to right. And then now we're going to uh, return this flipped image uh, back to the Anvil client. And to do that, again, this is specific to Anvil, but I'm just going to say uh, and the variable BS is io.bytes io. And we're going to call the name. This will be what the file will be called. And I'm just going to call the name flipped image. Maybe all small like that. And, uh, and then we're going to take the flipped image, that uh, object that we created, and I'm going to, sorry, save it. And so to save it, it'll be BS format equals JPEG. I'm going to save this as a JPEG image. And then we return anvil.blobmedia. And the type is image JPEG. ps dot get value and the name equals name. So uh, this bit of code basically saves the new image that we flipped uh, into a JPEG format, and then we return that JPEG format uh, with the name and the, the image type and everything as a binary object or a blob object back to the client. OK, so that's it for the server. And uh, I think that's everything we need to do there. Let's go back to the client. And so on the client side, we have this upload button. So let's just uh, double click on this upload button. And that brings up a function which allows us to uh, intercept that, that button click. After uh, an image is selected by the user, it'll then execute this code here. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say um, the uploaded image equals self.file underscore loader, which is uh, this image loader here is that, uh, that, that component that we loaded up. And we're going to say dot file. And so this takes the file that was chosen and puts it into uploaded image. And actually, I forgot to add uh, sort of the image components below this to display uh, the image that uh, is chosen. So I'm going to take an image object and drag this down below. So this first one, uh, I'm going to label as a ridge image. Okay. And I'm going to drag another image below that. And I will call this one flipped image. All right, so we'll have, we'll display two different types of images here. This will be the original one, and this will be flipped. So I'm going to go back to the code. And uh, so now that we've loaded the image, let's display the original image. So that we're going to put that at self dot image, a ridge image dot source, and that will equal uploaded image. So even before we do anything, I can probably run this and let's just go upload. And I'll just choose this, uh, this image that I have, PE. All right. So that shows us uh, what the original image that we selected is. Okay. So that's working. Now down below this, we then need to call the server and process the image for us and then send back the result, uh, which is what we did in the server module uh, previously. So we're going to call this flipped image equals, and then we're going to call the server, anvil.server.call, and then it's the file name, or, sorry, the, the function name. And so the function name is process image, and I'm, thank goodness for code complete here, code autocomplete. And then we're also going to uh, feed it in the uploaded image. All right. So you can see that there. And then so it's going to return uh, whatever after it processes or flips the image, it's going to uh, save that as flipped image. So then we just display it uh, in the right place, which is image flipped image 
dot source equals flipped image. There we go. So we're going to display the original image at the top, and then below that, we're going to display the flipped image. So let's run that and see what happens. So I'm going to upload the, or choose the file. So again, choose this random image that I have. Oh, but what happens? It says the pill module is only available on paid Anvil plans. So it's asking me to upgrade. So that's definitely an option. They have, uh, we can look at the plans and they have a seven day trial. Um, but if for whatever reason you don't want to do that yet, uh, I mean, this is the only way that you can get it to work uh, on their server side, like their, their local server module here. If you want to do anything that requires the paid plan, such as using this uh, pill image library, uh, you won't be able to do it here. And so if you, if you want to avoid that for now, what we can do is we can then use this uh, code that we've written and put that into an uplink file. And so I'm going to show you how to do that now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this code here and I'm going to cut it. And actually, we don't need this anymore. We don't need these, or, or, although I'll, I'll copy and paste that into uh, our uplink file. Then I'm going to go to our uplink file. And um, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to paste it here. No, let me just hide this so you can see this better. But we had our original say hello remote file from the last video, and this is a new function that we're adding, which is the process image one. I'm gonna add a remote here just to let myself know. You can call this uplink or remote, or I mean, it's up to you, but it just helps me know that I'm calling a, an uplink file by calling it remote. And so I'm using the exact same code that I created on the Anvil server end, um, the, their local server, and uh, let me go back here and import the pill image library and import IO. So that's there. So you can save that and go back to my uplink file. And I'm going to import everything I had in the server file into my uplink file. And again, everything else is the same, like having the, the connect uplink code and having Anvil server callable. And I think Pretty much all of this stays the same. We have this Anvil server wait forever. So let me save this file. And actually, if I go to my terminal, and again, I go python uplink.py, and I run it, this will work. And just, just a, an aside on having this code uh, like the way it is, this wait forever uh, line of code, if I press Control C, it kind of looks really ugly, right? It's like a keyboard interrupt, there's a trace back, it kind of displays this error of me interrupting it. And uh, and if we wanna make it look a little better, um, what I can do here is uh, conventionally we'll have a if name equals main. This is just standard convention for Python. Uh, to indicate that if you're loading it directly uh, from the command line, uh, run this, run the following code. So I'm going to say try and accept. Uh, actually, it's accept keyboard interrupt. And I'm going to take this line of code and we're going to run it here. And so it's running that. And then if it if it has a keyboard up, up, uh, interrupt, uh, we'll just say exiting, just something simple like that. You can put whatever you like. So now with this try accept uh, bit of code here, uh, let's let's save it and run it again. Oops, forgot to do that as a double equals sign. And run it again. So now it runs as we expect, but this time if I break out of it, it actually just says exiting. So it's it's just a cleaner, nicer way rather than always seeing this ugly error. So I like to add that in whenever we uh, whenever I have this uplink uh, wait forever line of code. <laughs> okay, so anyways, back to what we were talking about with image processing. So now uh, when I call this, this uh, function from the client side, it's gonna run my uplink file. 
And actually the one other thing I forgot to do is we need to import this uh, onto our local computer. So I don't, I'm outside of this uh, virtual environment again. So I'm gonna load it again, which is ven bin activate. So again, I see this venb here in parentheses, which indicates I'm, I'm running this specific virtual environment. And so let me clear this. And uh, so I would do pip install pillow. And I would let that install. So if I didn't do that, it'll probably give me an error because it can't find this, uh, this image object. But now that I've installed Pillow, uh, it should work. So now I'm gonna clear this again and run my uplink file, python uplink.py. So that's now running. So let's go back to the client and go back to our client code. And, and that, let's just try running the code and see if it, if it works. So click on the upload button. I'm going to choose my file. Oh, we got a, oh, that's right. So it's looking for this code call or this function called process image. But as you recall, I now call that process image, process image remote underscore remote, right? Cause that's, that's all, it's now accessing my uplink file, which I renamed and I added remote to it. So let's run it again. Upload the image, choose the image that I want to upload. Let's see what happens. There you go. So it actually, there's no errors or anything, and it displayed the original file. It flipped it on the server side on my uplink code, and it, upload, it sent it back to the client, and it's showing the reverse of the image. So uh, that's a very, a, a little bit more complex example, and it helps illustrate that uh, on the server side, if you want to use the uplink module here, uh, on, uh, sorry, the server module uh, from Anvil here, uh, there are some limitations unless you're a paid customer. And, uh, and that pillow file, uh, if you are a paid customer, you can then switch it to full Python 3. And that contains many other installed libraries, including that pillow uh, library. And so you wouldn't have any problems if you're a paid user to use it here. But uh, in my case, this is not a paid plan. It is the free, uh, free account. And so in order to uh, still make it work, you have to use uh, the uplink file. And so um, the uplink file, you can again, load any, any library you want, or you can do anything you want on your side of things, uh, including uh, processing images using this, this pillow uh, image library. And it will work just like it was working um, using the Anvil uh, server-side code. And um, yeah, I'll show you this one more time. It's processing and it shows you the flipped image. Okay, so that's it for uh, Uplink. Uh, I hope that was helpful to you, uh, showing you a basic example and then something a little bit more uh, in involved or a little bit more complex. And if you have any questions about this, uh, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, and if you have any suggestions of what else you'd like to see uh, for Anvil, I'd love to know. So please leave it in the comments below. Uh, make sure you like the video if you liked it. If you loved it, uh, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'll keep uh, putting out some videos like this to help you guys out. All right. Thanks again. And that's it for now.